Uh, Mr. Henserling, uh, you're allotted seven minutes, if you will. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my apologies to you gentlemen. I missed most of your testimony and earlier questioning. I think you know by now that this hearing was scheduled against some leadership elections, so my comments may be redundant, my questions may be redundant. Forgive me, but it's you who are asking for the money. You need not convince me of the tragic economic circumstances to our nation uh, should your three firms go belly up. I don't need to be convinced of that. But I do need to be convinced that if you get an additional $25 billion, that somehow that's actually going to make the difference. What I haven't seen come across my desk, come across my transom, or what I have not heard, is a plan that convinces me that with the $25 billion uh, that you will achieve sustainability. How do I know that you will not become the next AIG? $25 billion now, $25 billion next month, $25 billion the month after that. And I'm sorry we're in this tragic circumstance. There are people in my district who will be affected by this. But you know what? It's not the fault of the taxpayer. It's not their fault. It's not the consumer's fault. If there's any fault that lies here, it's with you gentlemen before me and your predecessors. Now, Mr. Nardelli, I drove a 1998 Jeep Cherokee here to work. I've had it for 10 years. It's a great vehicle. Small problem with the back hatch staying open. We can talk about that afterwards. I like the car, but clearly a lot of Americans don't. There's no doubt that your labor costs are substantially higher than your competitors, and there's no doubt that on most consumer satisfaction surveys, the big three are scoring towards the bottom. Again, it's not the consumer's fault. And so I wonder, when I look at the $25 billion, I ask myself several questions. Number one, this is the second $25 billion. I, I, I want to help you. I may not want to help you the way you want to be helped, but I want to help you. It wasn't 60 days ago that you already received $25 billion. Now, you've got environmental goalposts that you have to negotiate. I'd be more than happy to stay here with my colleagues and try to work on legislation that would give you access to that money for your immediate needs. But I, don't, I haven't heard that from you. And again, forgive me, maybe I missed that in your earlier testimony. I would be willing to help you with your health care cost. I'd be willing to help you with your tort cost going forward. I know that we have the, the highest uh, tort cost in our manufacturing of any of our competitors. Uh, we've got the most expensive tort system in the world. Be happy to introduce legislation today. Frankly, I've already introduced it. Zero out the capital gains tax for two years to invite capital off the sidelines to invest in your firm. But what you're doing is you're asking for $25 billion out of a pot of money that I did not support in the first place. And so I asked myself several other questions. $25 billion and $25 billion is a lot of money. And right now, all across America, and certainly in the 5th District of Texas, the major employer is small business. The average capitalization of a small business in America is $25,000. With the amount of money that you were, have either received or are receiving, I mean, we, we could start two million small businesses in America today. Or maybe we could save two million small businesses that are on the verge of going bankrupt. Now, we haven't heard of their names. They don't have representatives or lobbyists who are walking our hallways, but they're out there. This money has opportunity cost. And if we give you $25 billion, that's $25 billion that can't go to small business. I hear the argument, too big to fail. Well, I come from Dallas, Texas. American Airlines is headquartered in Dallas, Fort Worth. They've gone through some tough economic times. They may go through future tough economic times. Are they too big to fail? If we give you the money, are they next in line? And who's after that? At what point does Starbucks get in line? Who doesn't get in line for the $700 billion dollars. Uh, these are questions that have to be answered. I have other concerns. Again, I understand 
the credit crunch, but what industry hasn't been impacted by the credit crunch? And at some point, when as a nation do we decide we're going to quit borrowing money from the Chinese and send the bill to my five-year-old son and my six-year-old daughter and all the children and grandchildren across America? These are questions that I have. So you can clearly tell which way I'm leaning, but I hope I still have an open mind. It is not an empty mind, uh, but it's an open mind. I, I still stand ready to be persuaded. So the first question I would ask is number one, where is the written plan? And if you have the written plan, are you willing to make a commitment to the United States Congress and the American taxpayer that if you get this money, you will not be back? I'll start with whoever cares to answer the question. I, uh, prior to your being here, commented on that matter that we, we like all businesses, build our plans on um, key assumptions, the best ones we can come up with on uh, starting with what's going to be the state of the economy, what's going to be state of the credit market, what's going to be demand in, our sec in, in the auto sector, for example. So what we try to do is put together a pretty, what we think is a conservative plan for the next year and uh, figure out how much funding, based on the best guess we have today, would be required in view of the absence of the availability of traditional funding sources we relied upon to get us through that time period. So. You know, it's through that process that we individually and then, and then as a group have come up with this amount of $25 billion. Um, Congressman, I'd like to guarantee you that that, that is under every circumstance we imagine uh, enough money. I can't make that statement. I don't know. I know based on a reasonable scenario that I think it is, it is enough. But well, Mr. Wagner, maybe I missed it, but what plan have you or are you willing to put on the desk of members of the United States Congress to convince us that at least there is a fighting chance that you will achieve sustainability. Where, where is that? We have a developed a detailed plan. I think the nature of it, traditionally those kind of things are highly competitively sensitive and uh, SEC disclosure matters and things of that sort, but we would be glad with the right kind of format um, in, in just to make sure we're aligned with SEC requirements and, and others, be glad to review that kind of data with the appropriate people.